I'm right in. Welcome to day two of Food Defenders. Come on right in, folks. We'll get started in a minute. We'll just give folks some time to join us. But for those that are here in the chat, let me know. Where are you guys joining us from? Where are you from in the chat? Please do let us know. Come on in, make yourself comfortable. We have Winnipeg, Cochrane, Richmond Hill. Awesome. Welcome, well, Alberta, <laughs> Toronto, how's it going? Alberta, lovely. Yeah, for those who are just joining us in the chat, let me know where are you where, where are you joining us from? Toronto represent, fantastic. All right, Alberta. Oh, we are, we have a national turnout. Vancouver, welcome. Good stuff. We'll just give everybody a few more minutes, perhaps just to get in to the webinar. And we'll get started in a minute. Come on right in. I don't know about you guys, but it's really dark and dreary where I am. So I'm hoping that it's not too dark and dreary where you are and you have sunshines and beautiful weather. So come on right in. For folks. Good stuff. So Maybe we'll start and then for folks that are just joining in, they can come in. Hello everyone, for those who have just joined in, welcome to Food Defenders Day 2. In the chat, let us know where you come from. Where are you joining us from? We have folks from BC, we have folks from Alberta, Toronto represent, Ontario, Richmond Hill, Winnipeg, all good stuff. Toronto, says so Stefan, love that. <laughs> Gwen's from Edmonton, Colin Landing. All right, sounds great, welcome. Okay, so maybe we'll get started. And then for those that are still joining us a little bit later, they can come join, but I don't wanna hold anyone up for these four amazing recipes that we're about to see. Perfect. So yeah, hello everyone. My name is Rose. I'm the Community Programs Manager at Second Harvests. Welcome to day two of Food Defenders, Wastewise Legacies. So for those joining us for the first time, welcome, welcome, welcome. And for those who joined us yesterday for day one, welcome, welcome back. It's good to see you virtually. <laughs> we have a jam-packed one hour for you filled with more cooking from scraps and no house. So today we have two amazing South Asian home chefs who will be showing us two recipes each to help us use those leftovers while churning up mouth-watering South Asian food. So can leftover rice, wilting herbs, and other back-of-the-fridge forgotten finds become unforgettable yummy dishes? You betcha. And Almas and Nita will show us how it's done in a little bit. We also would like to thank our sponsor for the event, CI Financial. Thank you so much for helping us make this event possible. So we have an exciting evening ahead of us. So better get started. And I'd love to begin with a land acknowledgement. So while we meet today on a virtual platform, we would like to take a moment to acknowledge the indigenous peoples of all of the lands that we're currently on today. And we do this to reaffirm our commitment and responsibility in improving relations between nations and to improving our own understanding of local indigenous peoples and their cultures. So from coast to coast to coast, we acknowledge the ancestral and unceded territory of all the Inuit, Métis and First Nation peoples that call Canada home. So please join me in acknowledging the harms and mistakes of the past and to consider how we can, in our own very special way, move forward in a spirit of reconciliation and collaboration. So thank you very much. Okay, so for 
Those of you who are not familiar with Second Harvest, we are Canada's largest food rescue organization and we are an expert in perishable food recovery. Our mission is dual. It is no waste, no hunger, and it's our commitment to the planet that is both environmental and community focused. We have an incredible 36 year history of rescuing unsold surplus amazing food from across the supply chain and redirecting that food to charities and non for profits to serve their in need communities. Okay, so a few housekeeping rules. Uh, this session is being recorded and we can share with you the recording after the workshop. So currently your video is off and your audio is muted. So we do recommend that you interact with us in the chat. So any comments, concerns, questions, we'd love to hear it. Please let us know in the chat. My colleague Emily will be monitoring that chat today and providing some support. Okay, so first and foremost, I'd love to get the read, a read of the room. So please feel free to spend a few seconds and complete the first poll of today's session. Amazing. Maybe give it a couple more seconds. All right, get that last minute answer in there. Okay, and maybe we'll close the poll right now, Em. Amazing, thank you so much. We'll get rid of that poll. Sweet. Okay, so let's do a quick run through of what happened in day one in Food Defenders. So yesterday, we learned that food loss and waste is a huge problem in Canada. We learned that almost, well, almost 60%, 58% really, but almost 60% 60, uh, 60 of all of the food that is produced and imported in Canada is lost and, or wasted which is the equivalent amount of 35.5 million metric tons or the equivalent weight of 350,000 blue whales. We also learned that out of that waste, 32% is perfectly good food. It's food that you and I would go to the grocery store and be completely happy to buy. And that's the equivalent weight of 11.2 million metric tons or the weight of 90 CN towers. Oh my goodness. So last night we also had gastronaut, cookbook author, artist, and eight-time Guinness World Record holder, Mr. Bob Bloomer, share with us two amazing recipes. So he took tops from greens like celery and radish and fennel, scraped that last bit of peanut butter from the jar, added in sprouting garlic and any oils that he could find to make an amazing pesto pasta delicious. If that wasn't enough, he then took food scraps from his friend Matthias <laughs> and turned stems, leaves, leftover takeout rice, old soy soy packages, an old egg, and turned the, all of that into a mouth-watering stir-fry dish that had many of us wishing that we were in his kitchen. I don't know about folks that attended yesterday, but I definitely made some stir fry yesterday. Very inspired by that recipe. So it was a great night filled with fun and engaging strategies to reduce our food waste for sure. So if you missed day one, no worries, we got you. The recording is up on our YouTube channel and the link is in the chat. All right, folks, we have four amazing recipes to share today from two amazing home chefs. So let's just jump right in. To start us off, we have Almas Zakiuddin. I hope I said that right, Almas. <laughs> Almas began cooking her family recipes only after coming to Canada more than two decades ago from Bangladesh. A key element in her food culture has been to avoid waste and to try to use every part of an ingredient, a true food rescue hero for sure. Amos is a retired university instructor, former journalist, mother, and a grandmother. Sharing her home recipes with family and friends is a way uh, for her to celebrate her culture and ethnic roots. So I'll stop sharing my screen and I'll pass it on to Amos to get us going. Thank you so much, Rose. Thank you so much. I, can you hear me, everyone? 
Okay, great. Um, yep. And I want to thank the Second Harvest team, Emily, and all of you uh, for giving me this wonderful opportunity. Um, hello and welcome everyone to my kitchen and my home in Mississauga, Ontario. I'm thrilled to have this opportunity. And you know, I think all of you must be excellent cooks. So please bear with me because um, I'm not that great, a fantastic cook. I'm just a home cook, um, elevated to the title of home chef. Um, so uh, before I tell you about my dishes, um, uh, and you can join me if you like, I just wanted to say, uh, pause for a moment and uh, give thanks. So I want to thank my creator who gives me life and provides me with nourishment. And I want to thank, um, Rose has already done it, but I want to reiterate my respect and acknowledgement for the First Nations peoples, including particularly the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nations on their lands I live and I cook, and I'm very grateful. I also want to thank my mother who taught me how to cook. Okay, so I'm a Canadian with roots in South Asia, particularly Bangladesh and Pakistan, but also parts of India. And you know, when I came to Canada, one of the things that I noticed was that there's a quite a lot of waste of food here. In South Asia, particularly in Bangladesh and in many parts, other parts of that area, we eat everything. And you know, every part of a vegetable or a, any kind of ingredient is usually consumed. So when Rose told me, Second Harvest said, you know, produce something for to recycle, revitalize, Another R, um, revive. So the three R's I've used. <laughs> when Rose told me that I had quite a few options, but I chose these two dishes for two reasons. One is because it's very close to my heart. It's from Bangladesh, but also because this month we celebrate Bangladeshi New Year and New Year across South Asia. So uh, the first of spring, Pahapoyla, Boishak, or Besaki, it's a lot of celebrations. And it, at that time, we actually celebrate a lot of the rural food that ordinary people eat. So my first dish is a cool rice bowl. And I call it a cool rice bowl, but imagine a very sexy, hot gazpacho um, going out on a date with congee. And you get this dish, I think. It's not gazpacho, it's cool like gazpacho, but not as hot. And it's not, a, it's not hot like a congee. So it's a kind of a combination. And you know, rice in Bangladesh, rice is our daily bread. So, um, you know, rice is everything. It's, it's, it's something that in many parts of South Asia, people can't do without. So I guess how this dish must have started, and if you see over here, this is a piece of muslin. I wrapped uh, it in a ceramic bowl. And before I open it and give you the surprise, let me quickly tell you, how did it start? I think there was a woman in a kitchen who had some, guess what this is? Leftover rice. Oops, did I get it right? In a pot. And she said, my God, what do we do with this rice? Nobody wants it. If I leave it, it's going to go bad. So she decided, and I give all the credit to women. Sorry, guys, I'm sure a man must have also thought of it. Excuse me. But, you know, I'm taking the liberty of doing that. And what she must have done is she just poured water into it. And can you see it's floating around? There's water in this. So this is one day old rice in a clay pot, you can do it in any pot that you like. It can be, you know, whatever you cook in. And in it are kaffir lime leaves, which I love because they give a flavor to the rice. Uh, one small uh, uh, onion or whatever it's called. It's the smaller version. I, the name escapes me now, but it's something that's very similar to what we have in Bangladesh. I've tweaked it for Canada and I've added a radish because I love radish and the two green chilies. But remember, this is not going to give any heat. So I'm going to take it out. Shallot. Yes, Deborah, thank you so much. It's called a shallot. Yeah, so a shallot because it's closer to it. So I'm going to take this out. I'm going to take this out and uh, you know, people have found that this kind of rice has two major advantages. Do you know that when you put rice in water, uh, it preserves it so it doesn't go off. If you leave it for long enough, it gets fermented. And then, of course, all kinds of things happen, which I won't mention on this show, but it gets 
fermented, but if you leave it overnight and you just put water in it and a few herbs, a few uh, you know, ingredient, um, spices if you like, the probiotic element in it triples or even in increases even more. So it's very good for your gut. And all the nutrients, calcium, iron, potassium, they all increase. So traditionally, when it's a very hot day and you really don't feel like eating much, this is the rice that you eat. It's left over from the night before. It's been soaked in water. It's called pantabhat, okay? And the water can be drunk separately. It can be drunk by children, pregnant women, older people, like a broth. And so this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to empty it out into this. Uh, and then, and you have it at room temperature. So as I said, it's gazpacho, but it's not as spicy. And then I'm going to just put this in my little bowl that I'm going to eventually serve it to you in. So there it goes. And now you can cut it. You can slice these if you like. You can slice the shallot or, and you can um, slice the green chilies. But something that you need to add in this, which is quite critical, and the water, see, there was lovely sort of water here. Sorry, I'm kind of, and it's a little grayish. It's very, got a lot of nutrition. If there are no humans you want to give it to, use it for your plants. They'll make the plants really wake up and go, hello, yeah, I'm happy. Uh, this is a radish and I just leave it in it because I like to bite a little bit of the radish as I'm having the rice, but you can chop it up. I also leave the green chilies whole. And now I add something which is a little, you know, interesting. So take a look at this. Uh, this is my mother's old skillet. Oh God, right? It's heavy and it's cast iron. And I'm going to put it here, but I will not turn it on because if I turn it on, honestly, guys, I'll have 911, I'll have the fire brigade here. Because what you do is you turn it on and then you toast red chilies. So look at the red chili, can you see it? I like the Kashmiri red chili. This looks a bit old and gnarled, but it's actually quite delicious. And here's another one. So I'm showing it to you. So I would put it on this and I would toast it. My eyes will run and I'll sneeze a lot and I won't be able to speak anymore, but I have the most beautiful, gorgeous toasted uh, red chilies. There you go, see them. Now, in order to ensure that I do a lot on one day, I put them in a bottle and then I just put them in my fridge. So I'm not really a typical Bangladeshi woman, but you know, it stays outside. And uh, these chilies are traditionally used in India and Bangladesh and Pakistan, they say to take away the evil eye. It really is, nazar utanna in Urdu they say. And it's because I feel, you know, what doesn't kill you will make you better. This is sometimes when it burns, it will light your sinuses. It'll clear your sinuses, you'll be good to go forever. Okay, so this is what I do to the green chili. I take it, uh, to the red chili, I take it and then I'm going to just break it. Can you see my fingers? I'm just gonna go like that. And I'm going to put the broken chili in there. So even if there is a little bit of heat left, all the seeds, I'm, I'm saying goodbye to the seeds. If you don't use the seeds, and I'm not going to use more than two. After this, please don't use your contact lenses because you've just touched red chilies unless you wanna to go to, you know, the emergency because it's really hot your hands right now. So I'm gonna put this aside. And I'm going to put this aside and I'm going to tell you what you have this rice with. Because the rice is pretty bland, right? Not that, uh, you know, it, it hasn't got too much life on its own. But what we do is we have with the rice a bunch of bhartas. Now what's a bharta? A bharta is simply translated, it's a mash. Anything that you mash, pound and make it into a kind of a, like mashed potatoes, it's called a bharta. You can do it to your ex if you like. Sorry, I never said that, okay? Now, what you do is you take any ingredient, literally. So I just had, imagine that you have a day old uh, fish that's been, you know, let's look at it. It's, it seems to have its, had its life. 
it could be dry, it could be leftover curry, it could be leftover uh, grilled fish or baked fish, it could be potatoes, it could be the skin of a vegetable. So anything that you have, and what you do with it is you do this to it. All right. I've just taken all the fish and I've crumbled it. Okay, so it's quite dry and crumbly. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bunch of spices. Uh, that's my saute, my sliced onion, diced, very finely diced. You know, when we were growing up, we were told uh, your husband will never like you unless you can dice it really fine. Well, you know what? The rest is this is history. Okay, here is your, um, uh, this is cilantro. It's all in my recipe. I found some lovely sprig onions at the, back, at the back of my fridge. So I thought, okay, you know what? Let me toss it in. I don't know whether it's typical to Bangladesh, but I trust, decided I'd go with it. And here are some green chilies that have been sliced. Now, green chilies are pretty hot. Uh, so what I'm going to show you is how you can take a green chili and there, can you see it? Yes. And you can unheat it. So see, can you see how I'm taking the seed out? I just cut, sliced it a little and then I'm just taking out the seeds and then I'm going to finely dice it. So if you take out the seeds from green chilies, trust me, they're not really that hot. They're pretty eatable. So, but if you don't want it, don't use the green chilies, okay? So these are all my ingredients. And what I did was I put them all in this. And because of time and everything, a little bit of regular oil, any oil that you like. I use uh, canola oil uh, because the, Oil of my choice is something called mustard oil, but mustard oil for some reason is not allowed as an edible oil in Canada. And it's not for some reason because it's, uh, oh, you can't see anything. You are, there's a thing in the chat. We cannot see anything you are showing. Oh, okay, here. Can you see it now? Yeah. Yes, you can use olive oil. Uh, the choice I have is mustard oil because, or sesame oil, something that has a bit of zing in it, but because I can't use mustard oil, it has an element that is not supposed to be ingested. What I've done is I've kind of amended it. So I'll show you what I did. I got regular oil. So this is any kind of oil, right? Can you see the oil here? It's just plain oil, nothing uh, too exciting about it. And then I took this, uh, Coleman's mustard, because what is mustard oil? Mustard oil is, and I'm going to show you, it says here not for consumption. This is the Bangladeshi mustard oil bottle that I have, but it's not for consumption in Canada. And I took Coleman's mustard and I mixed it with the oil. Whoops. All right, I'm dyslexic, I think, <laughs> excuse me. So there you go. See, there's mustard or mustard, Coleman's mustard, and there's uh, oil. And I added to it lemon juice. Well, the beauty of lemon juice is that lemon juice keeps it a little tart and the oil doesn't get, it's almost like making a Bangladeshi version of mayonnaise, I guess. You know, because you, unless I just don't have eggs, I guess, right? So there you have it. There you have the mustard and there's oil. I've put salt in my fish already. So, you know, I don't add soil, uh, salt when I'm making this last dish because I feel that it's not necessary. I, I'm, I, I like to have um, less salt than, uh, a little less than required because, you know, it's just unhealthy to have too much salt. So you can do this with uh, fish. And I'm gonna show you another thing I've done it with, and it's not in the recipes, but I just thought I'd show a vegetarian option. And this is just the potatoes I had left over. So I took potatoes and can you see the potatoes? They've been boiled, they've been mashed. And uh, I've added cilantro and uh, green chilies and onions. And I'm gonna just make it into a mash now. And I'll show you how we eat it. So imagine I've got this. Uh, how am I doing for time? You're doing good, my friend. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. So I, if, did have a, 
Someone did have a quick question. So in terms of the mustard oil, how much oil versus mustard powder in juju? Yeah. So I have put, I taste, you know, you have to taste it. So I'm going to taste it a bit. And I have to say, this is the Muslim month of fasting. It's Ramadan. And most people are fasting in the Muslim world. So I ask your forgiveness. I am going to taste it. I'm not fasting. But it's supposed to be very disrespectful to eat in front of people who are fasting. It's like smoking in front of someone who's just quit smoking, right? You don't want to. So I'm just going to test it, if you don't mind, and tell you. It's about, I put it in my recipe, but you know, yeah, it's nice. It's got a little bit of darkness in it. I may not add all of it. So now that depends on your heat level. If you like your, you know, to be to be very hot, of course you do that. If you don't, then you can do something else. Okay, uh, then use less. So here now, here goes. I'm going to add. So I sorted all these spices that you saw: onion, cilantro, spring onions, green chilies, in a tiny bit of oil, just enough oil. I used, I actually used a, a spray because I don't want to make it too oily. I'm going to add oil before I serve. And you know why in a bharta you have to add oil? Because it's a leftover item. It's something that's not really sort of full of moisture anymore. So you've got to give it a little bit of zing. Otherwise, you know, it's, it's kind of dead on you. So you've got to bring it back to life. Some people don't cook this. They just add all these ingredients that you see me adding now. They add it raw. But I like to saute it a bit because I'm using stuff that's quite... Uh, you know, it's not really very fresh. And I have to show you something. I have to pause for a second. This is thanks to my friend from uh, where I got introduced to Second Harvest, Domi. Shout out to you. You know, this cilantro is nearly two weeks old. I put it in water and I covered it and I just left it in the fridge. And it stayed for two weeks. So, wow. Otherwise, you know, I'm, there's only me. Uh, and I sometimes my cilantro just goes off. So if you can see, I'm trying to mix this. And I would use my uh, fingers. But you know what? It, can, it's, it will still do like this. And now I'm going to add the mustard. So can you take a look? Can you see my teaspoon? I'm putting a one dollop first, and then I'm going to put at least a tablespoon, maybe a tape, almost two tablespoons of oil. And just keep adding the oil till you see that it's got a consistency and it has a little bit of zing in it. I think I can use more oil. So it's, you know, you have to do what you, uh, what you're comfortable with but remember that the fish is very dry and it all the potatoes are very dry and they don't have any you know of their own moisture left so we are adding it on okay and let me just put it in a i need a spatula for this because that's the best way of making sure everything is mixed i'm going to taste it and see what it's like. Mmm, mmm, it's nice. The fish is nice. I think I need more oil. So go with more oil if you want to. Oh, and the mustard is lovely. So I'm going to add more mustard. If you add mustard oil, uh, that's the perfect thing to do. But I don't know whether Second Harvest would be happy with me using something that is not allowed in Canada. So I said, okay, I'm going to figure out a way of making it sort of must, giving it the same flavor, but not having. So this is a bharta. This is how you do a bharta. And there you go. All right. And just to be, show you that I can, um, I'm going to put this on the bowl. So move this to the side. Uh, usually you take this out before you eat because it's nice and it's, it's done its job. You can put this to the side, put this to the side because you don't want to chomp onto it. I would mix this liberally into my rice 
and the rice is really moist. You guys, you can't feel it, but when I touch it, it's really moist rice. And then uh, I'm going to be a bit artistic. Will you give me, and let me just do, just to show you that I can. <laughs> So there you have a rice bowl with fish bharta and I'm going to just put it on something that looks slightly nicer just to make sure. You can have it with rice. You can even have it with pita bread. So I've got bread as well here and in this I'm going to put out my potatoes. So if, you, if you're really interested in a potato mash, and forgive me if some of you can't see it, and mash it. Think of that X and go, yes! Sorry, I get carried away when I'm cooking because I love the, the feel of food. I just love the way food uh, nourishes and it's got all the beauty of you know life in it really. And I'm going to take the potato Alu bharta out here. And you can have it as a vegetarian because I didn't think that everyone would have fish. And you can have it as a vegetarian dish. And I had some old pita bread. So I put it here on the side. Maybe you can uh, just take that and go like that with it. Delicious. Or we did have a quick question, Amas. For the fish, could we use other fish like squid too? Yes, anything. Nice. Squid, you know, excellent bharta is made with prawns. Mm. Because seafood is okay. Very so prawns is a good. Oh, it's absolutely it's one of the favorite. But with prawns, I instead of putting green chilies, I would put the red dried chilies. For some reason, prawn it's a strong kind of um, ingredient. So you can dress it up more with stronger spices. You can put rye, you can put cumin, you can put, um, use your imagination and spice up your bhartas with whatever you like. And uh, you know, and see over here, you've got your, this is the, the potato, this is the rice bowl. And if you want, uh, a lot of people love to put water in, back in it. So I'm just going to put some of the water back. So once I've served it, uh, housewives will usually come round. Mum will come and pour a little bit of the water in here again for her. You know, favorite child gets more. Ha ha. But you know, and so then you go like that. You break into this fish. Ooh. And I'm going to have a piece of. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, I want to eat with you, Amas. I feel forgive like... Me, forgive me <laughs> anyone who's fasting today. I really <laughs> ask your forgiveness, but I'm not. Oh, it looks delicious. I did have one more question. Could we use canned fish as well? If Is that yes. possible? Yes. Yeah, I do it with tuna. Nice. I do it with tuna and any other canned fish, seafood, meat, chicken, potatoes, um, you know what is very good is the, is the skin of uh, vegetables. Uh, yes, you can slice the onions if, you're, if you don't want to bite into it like I just did. You know, this is very... But in the villages in Bangladesh, who's going to cut it up? They're just going to go bite it. That's the way real, you know, people eat. I mean, you don't open your mouth like jaws, but you've just got, you know, you take a nice morsel and you, you eat it. And then you've got green chilies. Traditionally, uh, you know, South Asians bite into their chilies. They take a morsel of food and then they bite. But because the, the, the fish is quite spicy now, because I put green chilies there, I don't need to add anymore. And then one last thing I wanted to mention is that I usually have lime juice and I put that, you can put lime juice on top. Uh, yes, I soak the rice. With a, with a glass of something someone's saying. I, I can just read a few of the comments. 
No, I think um, Carmen was just saying that I think this dish would oh, taste fantastic with rice. And I'm on I'm on the same boat as you, Carmen. I think that would be lovely. Well, oh my gosh, Amas, I think your two recipes are just freaking fabulous. I'm hungry just looking at it. Oh <laughs> um, and and I, uh, of the potatoes. Give me a second. Let me just see. Yeah, I did do this. So you can even, and then you add the mash here. You add the potato. And then you go like that. So it's like a rice bowl. Delicious. One thing that I forgot to mention, please add salt. I, I'm on a low salt diet, so you didn't see much salt being used. I just salted the fish, but obviously you need to salt it. You need to salt the rice a bit and you need, but I didn't put too much because you know I don't want to have that, but salt is very important as well. Oh, for sure. Yeah, some, you know, a little, a little bit of salt is good for that extra kick of flavor. Amas, you have been fantastic, my friend. I can't wait to dig into this. Uh, uh, day old rice, folks, make that into an amazing cooling dish. And for any leftover veggies and any fish canned or previously cooked, feel free to make that into an amazing borta. Good stuff. All right. So switch over to our second chef of the evening. I'm gonna quickly share my screen so I can do her introduction justice. Give me two seconds. Um, here we go. All right. So up next, we have Chef Nita. Uh, Nita Goswami is a wife and a mother of two amazing kids. And one of them might be making a debut tonight. So hello, Hia, first and foremost. She is a passionate uh, person and just an all around one of the kindest people I've ever met. And she's incredibly passionate about cooking, gardening, sewing, arts and crafts, and learning new skills. She has a degree in plastic engineering, and she immigrated to Canada from Gujarat, India. So Nita, please go ahead and take it away. So, this uh, hi everyone, and I'll be making pav bhaji and uh, spicy bread today. And I don't have much time, so I'm gonna do both of the recipes simultaneously. First, I'll start with the pav bhaji. For that, I have put some I have put some butter and oil in the pan, and it's two tablespoons of oil and one tablespoon of butter, and it, you just have to uh, heat up a little bit. I have already heated a little bit, so I can save some time. And then you have to add, this is a mixture of boiled uh, vegetables. And I sent some pictures to uh, Rose, so you can send them like how they were looking when I started cooking them. And you might throw them away if you see those veggies in your refrigerator. So I'll add all mixed veggies. It's a potato, cabbage, cauliflower, eggplant, carrots, and you can add anything, whatever you want. But just make sure that you add potatoes in the same quantity as other vegetables so it will keep the binding. Now I'll add some green peas. I'll be adding some green peppers. You can add red peppers, and, and this recipe is amazing. Like you don't have to stick to certain vegetables. You can change whatever vegetables you have left over. You can use that vegetable. Mix it up. And when I boiled the vegetables, I pressure cooked them. And when I did that, I had some leftover vegetable stock from that, that you can see. So I'll add half cup of vegetable stock in this veggies. And I'll let it cook. I have a quick question, Nita. Was that yeah. purple stuff onions that you put in? No, I'm not going to put onions right now. Okay. okay. Yeah. But 
it was beside the green peppers and I, I can see some onions in there, but it's fine. Okay. So this is how I have done that. Main gravy for that. And now I'll cook this on large scale. Yeah. I'll cover it. It will cook for 10 minutes and I'll start the spicy bread. It's done now. And this is the pan I use for my oil. You can see. I'm going to add one tablespoon of oil. What oil are you currently using, Nita? It's canola oil, but I switch. Sometimes I, I use uh, avocado oil. Yeah, I use, I use olive oil. I use different kinds of oil, whatever. Even I can use, you can use the sesame seeds oil as well. But in India, the, my mom used to say that certain kind of oils we eat in certain kind of seasons. Like when it's cold, we eat sesame seed oils or brown nut oils. And then we switch uh, to vegetable or oil or canola oil when it's uh, summer. And I have put this oil on the stove. And I, I have to wait for this oil to heat up because I want this one really heated as well. And I'll show you what else I'm going to add. So this had eight, this were eight breads. I cut them in this small cubes, uh, one by one inch. And if you don't want to do this, you can just uh, uh, make pieces with your hands. You guys can read outside piece. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I used this chopper to, uh, to make most of the things. So when I chop onions and um, for us, green pepper, I use the small one. And when I chop tomatoes, I use the big one. Cool, for sure. And I'll wait for this to heat up and I'll add some mustard seeds to check if it's just or not. And I'll keep mixing this so it doesn't stick at the bottom. So could we use any bread at all, Nita, for, for the spicy bread, or does it have to be a specific type of bread? Any oil, any oil you can use. Okay, oil is ready. Oh my gosh, I love your circle pan of spices. That is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I have everything in here, so whenever I'm cooking, it's, it's ready for me. So <laughs> Cucumus to sit, coriander seed powder, red chili powder, turmeric, uh, asafoetida, and salt. But for salt, my mom used to say that don't use steel uh, utensil to store it, otherwise it, it will get rusted. So I use the plastic one. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll talk a little about this. This is, um, I hope you can see here. So it's dry fenugreek leaves. If you have it, use it. If you don't have it, don't worry about this. This is an optional thing. So when it's winter, we have some community gardens uh, in our community and they grow lots of fenugreek. So what we do, we take so many bunches of it. We take the leaves off, we wash them and dry them and we store them for the year. And that, that gives amazing smell to the recipes. Oh, I'll have to try that out for sure. Oh my gosh. Recipe, it will make your kitchen messy, but it's gonna be amazing. Tasty and yummy. So the must be just cracking now. I'll add cumin seeds. And is it just like a tablespoon of everything? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I'll add turmeric. I have 
all those ingredients ready that I'm going to add in there. This is our curry leaves. It's green chili and it's spicy. If you don't like spicy food, just ignore that. Nice. And I add onions now. There's the onions, okay. <laughs> so for two medium onions. If you like more onions, you can add more. Or if you don't like, you just keep them. But some people in India, they don't eat onion or garlic. So you can choose those in any recipe. And then we so like that would be really perfect if you have leftover onions at the back of the fridge, just throw that in there. <laughs> and I'm mm. using this tomato scissor store from uh, yesterday. I made honey cream and just were leftover and oh, so much of it, somewhere leftover. Oh, that's perfect. So even like bruised tomatoes, leftover tomatoes, this could back all can be used in this recipe. Good stuff. Yes. We have a question, Nita, from, from Angela. Before you added all of your amazing ingredients, did you toast your mustard seed or your spices? Yeah, yeah. Let's see. And the mustard seed, seed blended, I added cumin seed. I let them cook for a while until it's dark brown. And then I added turmeric and then onions and, no, sorry, um, curry leaves and green cheese. Amazing. After the tomatoes are cooked a little bit, I add all the spices. I add grey chili powder. Some coriander seed powder. I have all the measurement in the recipe, but right now I am like my mom. I never measure anything. I just add, and I know the quantity. Like well, that's like that. the that's like the cornerstone of a bet of a of a good chef is like just putting whatever and tasting as you go. Definitely not at that level yet. I need to know: is it a tablespoon? Is it a teaspoon? <laughs> yeah, but sometimes it's difficult when you're teaching someone else that they don't understand the recipe. Yeah, it's really hard to teach someone. So I, I, I'm going to add this eight bread slices, cubed. So could we add any like stale, like stale bread would be perfect for this, eh? Because like, okay, good stuff. And just mix it up. In the beginning, it will not look that, that colorful and all, but when you mix it, just mix it gently. Good to know. Okay, good. Because I'm definitely a cook that like mix vigorously. All right. So gentle mixing is what I'm saying. <laughs> that happened to me when I started making this dish. Because in India, we, we used to eat a lot of uh, roti and bakri and we never used to eat a lot of bread. So we, ne we never had leftover bread. But when we moved it here, I noticed that, okay, Sometimes I don't have time to cook the rotis and bakeries or all the breads we make. 
So I started buying bread and I ended up having a lot of leftover bread. That's so similar to a lot of folks as well. It's like we buy, like if we go to Costco, we buy that three bag bread thing at Costco. We maybe use one and then two of them go moldy. So it's fantastic to use that kind of stale bread into this recipe. And fun fact, everyone, if you freeze your bread, it's like a good way to lengthen the life or chef life of your bread. So next time you have extra bread, consider freezing it or do what Nita's doing and create this yeah, amazing I'll make, like, very yummy brunch in the morning. My kids love this when uh, they have to go to school and they're hungry. They eat this and they may be good for at least three, four hours. Nice. So I'll keep this on and I'll keep stirring until I see the bread uh, pieces a little bit crispy and a little brown on the sides. Just let me know when uh, when there is 10 minutes left. Yeah, actually, you're at 10-minute mark, my friend. <laughs> and when this ready, we're just going to add uh, some coriander leaves on top. And otherwise, uh, we're not doing anything with that right now. So now I'll start with making a donut with this gravy. So you have to stir very hard. Okay, I'm gonna make a little bit of space in the center. I know my straw it's not straight, so whenever I do that, it just comes in this. Let me try this. So this is the space where I'll be putting some. I'll use a piece of butter in the center. And I'll put all the spices. Uh, this is a dry fanny grease, please, as I show. We'll go on top of butter. And this is pavaji masala, and this is garam masala. Uh, some people add them as in the same quantity, but my kids don't like this. A lot the garam masala, so I'm gonna add a little bit. Now add this garlic in there. Oh, this is my kind of recipe. I see a heaping amount of garlic. I'm all for it, Nita. <laughs> yeah, I try this. It's, it's amazing. So I'm not going to overcook all these ingredients, uh, onion and garlic. So I can see the brown on the bread now. And it's ready. Let's take this off the stove. And you can see the garlic is a little bit cooked. Add onions in there. I'm not going to add all the onions in the garlic part, though, as I'll garnish it with the chopped onions. Now, again, make a little pool in there. I know it, it takes a lot of butter and oil. If you don't like it, just, just add a little bit. But traditionally, we added a lot of butter and oil, so I'm gonna add that. And top it with red chili powder. And this will give a nice color to the recipe. This is Kashmiri red chili, and it's not spicy. And I'll add one, Teaspoon more of our masala on top. 
and my legs had more of anything going on. And this will uh, not let burn all the spices. If you add them directly on the heated oil, the spices will get burned. So try doing this. And I'm going to mix everything. How many minutes left? Uh, you have a good maybe five minutes left, my friend. Um, but we do have a question from Jennifer, and she asked, do you ever make large ba uh, batches of your recipe and then freeze them? Yes, I do that. What I do is I do the first step when I added all the vegetables and, and uh, vegetable stock and uh, green peas and green pepper. That part I'll do. I keep it in the fridge because... The onion part, it doesn't take a long. So I'll do this part later. And uh, usually I add tomatoes when I'm cooking all the vegetables in the beginning. But I'm going to add today a little late. As I, I noticed it, when last time I made this, this will give, give a nice color to the dish. And now you don't have to cover the pan. Just keep it open. Use the and mash all the veggies until it mixes well. Oh my God, this is perfect for any recipe. If you have leftover veggies, you just mash everything together and everything will come together. Good stuff. Yeah. Just spice it up a little bit and, and you can use boiled mashed potatoes and everything, whatever leftover you Even cooked vegetables, you can use them in there. If you have leftover green peas or mashed potatoes or cauliflower, just add in everything. But if you're cooking the raw veggies, just steam them or pressure cook them. If you're using the cooked one, just start with the first step I did in the in this video. How high is your um, heat right now, Nita? Is it medium high heat or are you full black? For my pan, it's really thick at the bottom and the stove is really small and it's not that heated up a lot. So, gotcha. so we're, we're thinking like low heat, medium to low heat. Got it. You can see in there, it's, it looks, it's it looks yeah, delicious. The color, the color is totally changed now. And it's not that spicy because we haven't added any green cheese in here. Oh, my daughter is waiting for this. They love Pavaji. <laughs> I'm going to turn the pan still. I'm going to take this. Yes. Just a few more minutes. I can't wait. You can't? It's almost done. So, but the Korean jellies, I never take this time off. I love the taste of this time. So I just do the roots of the big bunch. I take some leaves, wash them, dry them on the paper towel before I use this for this recipe as it's very dry and I don't want to make the bread moist. Oh, that's good. Yeah, putting all the stems in there, utilizing all part of the ingredient. I love it. Yeah, sometimes when you're, when you're making chutney, I just use stem and it tastes amazing. So just add some uh, coriander leaves, mint, green chili, lime, and salt. And it will make amazing chutney that you can use in any sandwich. So 
So our Prabhupada is ready. And you can see my stuff is all mess, but that's fine. That's really like the best. Yeah, it's ready. Yeah. I'll take this pen and this one on this. I know that's book. Yeah. I'll make it real quick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm using this one. But you can use any. Just make sure your pan is a little bit heated. If you have uh, the bun that is that doesn't have slit, just slit them in the half and put some butter in the pan. The stove is already heated. Take this off. Add some gray chili powder. If you don't like spicy, just skip this part. Use Pambaji masala. Just mix it up a little bit. We're not going to burn this, so I'm going to take this off there. And I'm sorry, I haven't chopped the Coriander is I don't like to chop them in, in advance. Like I, I like them freshly chopped. No, that's actually really great. I'm getting a lot of comments in the chat saying you're a pro chopper. <laughs> um, that's really awesome. Yeah, so just put this buns on the top of the spices and butter. Now put them on the stove again. And I'm sorry, I'm doing this with my hands, but just don't try this if you're new to kitchen. So when it's done, just flip them and, and look at the spices, but they're not burning. Just me you. Add some butter. Flip them. Sounds ready. You can't wait. All right. Our board the dishes. Here. And there, this is your proper <laughs> It's coming. And I'll add some chopped onion on top. Again, I'll put a piece of butter on the top. And just twist some of the lime juice on top. If you want, you can add the lime juice in, in the recipe as well. If you don't want, just add some on top. So this is what I use. And there. And garnish with this slice of lime. Our wine dish is ready. Yeah, we're on the room top. Mm 
So, serve two dishes. They both are ready. This one is spicy bread. <laughs> You're drinking water. And this is a pavaji. Oh my goodness. I don't know about all of you, but my stomach is growling over here. I'm like, here. I'm like, I'm, I'm ready to eat, mom. <laughs> so yummy <laughs> uh for sure my gosh yeah lots of comments in the chat also saying what amazing spices you know so many spices that you've used i'm sure it's just, uh, just amazingly delicious all of that from, just from bits and ends i think and leftovers from your fridge and you can make two amazing recipes spicy bread and pub bhaji so a uh, round of applause to nita and almas amazing recipes i know we're a little bit a little bit over time but that's okay i feel because we would not have wanted to miss that so so today we learned four recipes from two amazing home chefs no worries if you were at, just like me just curiously watching with all of the amazing spices and ingredients that was used. We will be sending you the recipes in your inbox, so feel free to look out for that. But I want to echo everybody in my team and say that these four recipes are definitely going to be one for the books for all of us as we try to reuse and repurpose and use all of the food in the back of our fridge to make amazing recipes. So before we push off today, I just wanted to let everybody know that um, we have a two upcoming webinar series in May. Um, so we have cooking from scraps. Oh, no, not cooking from scraps. Sorry. It's turning food scraps into compost. So with gardening season up and coming, see if you can turn your food scraps into compost. That will be on May 13th. Then on May 27th, we have uh, a webinar on celiac disease. So for those who would like to donate food and be more mindful about the food that you donate so that other folks can better access good healthy food for them, please join us on May 27th for that. But I want to just say thank you for joining us. And again, a special thank you to our um, event sponsor, CI Financial, for making the Food Defenders a possibility for all of us. I think we learned so much. And thank you so much for hanging out with all of us today on Food Defenders Day 2. Have a fantastic evening, everybody, and uh, we'll see you in the next webinar. Thanks so much. Have a good one. Rose, this is a, a oh. kale pie that I grew in my, on my kitchen, and I use it in a lot of recipes. Oh my gosh. All my right. Mother loves, loves this list. She just eat them, wash them, and eat them. <laughs> <laughs> I love that here. Amazing.